All right, we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Understanding CBD. My name is Stephen Wallman. I'm with Wallman's Apothecary. And Understanding CBD is a platform that I created years ago for people that uh, aren't familiar with cannabis. And it's not only just about CBD, but in order to understand CBD, you need to understand the body, the endocannabinoid system, how it operates. So we do interviews with experts uh, around the industry and in the industry and, and not in the industry for un unique perspectives. Um, today, we're talking with Dawn Marie Steenstra, and she has a lot of experience both uh, caring for uh, her patients um, before cannabis and also integrating cannabis into their wellness plans. So she has a very unique perspective that um, we hope this video you can share with either someone that hasn't used cannabis that might be struggling with something and um, it may be a solution for them or uh, share it with uh, caregivers that aren't familiar with cannabis either and want to break down that barrier and uh, and start incorporating it in. So with no further ado, hello there, Dawn Marie. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Great. I'm great. Nurse Dawn Marie Steenstra. It's great to see you from Entourage Consulting. Now, um, Dawn, Dawn Marie, we met, I think it's probably almost five years ago at mm -hmm. a, uh, it was, it was a Karma Fest. Karma and Fest. It was in Maryland. And it was my first event that I was speaking at as a, a CBD company. And um, there were some people that showed up there and I and I asked you and your husband, Eric, to come. And wow, was I happy because I didn't know much about, um, you know, anything other than actually manufacturing the CBD. And, and you really saved me by answering a lot of questions <laughs> about care. So welcome. Welcome to the episode, Dawn Marie. Thank you so much. I'm I'm very blessed to be here. I think it's great that there are people like you taking the initiative to educate the public, you know, about how to utilize cannabis safely and properly. Um, that's my main goal in what I do in Maryland as a clinical director of dispensaries. That's awesome. And, you know, one of the things that you said that really um, put everything in perspective for me, one of the first things you said was, you know, cannabis, because there were some people there that were concerned about, well, is it safe? And you said, you know, there isn't a lethal dose of CBD. You could take CBD and you may have some, there are, you know, there are risks with everything, right? but you're not going to die. Um, and, and that's not the case with the other uh, medications and things that you treat patients with, is it? No, it's not, unfortunately. I mean, we know from history that, you know, there is no lethal dose of cannabis in general, THC included. Um, we're finding, however, that when they do do the science that isolated cannabinoids in extreme doses can be a problem. You know, we have found with um, some of these studies with isolate CBD that uh, patients are having elevated liver enzymes. But normally, if you have a full spectrum product or you're taking, you know, less than 100 milligrams a day, um, usually it's not any kind of problem. Gotcha. Yeah. And there, and I appreciate you bringing that up because there are some side effects. And just to take a, a, a general step back, um, so with, when you're talking about patient care and um, what are, is there a certain type of patient or um, a qualifying condition that someone should look to cannabis as um, something that they would think about in, including into their treatment plan? Well, honestly, I think that if anybody has any kind of chronic pain issue in particular, that's a great place to start. Um, so often we're stuck in this merry-go-round of taking narcotics and taking uh, muscle relaxers and benzodiazepines and all these medications that doctors stack on top of one another to try to manage pain. And they're even starting to add um, psychotropics to that. Um, gabapentin has psychotropic effects as well as um, some other medications. And that just complicates the whole thing. And to me, you know, if a patient comes to me in pain, first thing I say is, you know, have you tried a full spectrum or a CBD product uh, derived from hemp? Because hemp, of course, was legalized in 2018 by the uh, federal farm bill. So that's the first step I usually take with anybody, um, especially the elderly. You know, the main purpose of utilizing cannabis is to feel better. And most people in their lives all day want to feel better. 
whether it's chronic pain, whether it's anxiety, whether it's um, just day-to-day -day stress, you know, full spectrum and cannabinoids can definitely assist with these kind of issues. So when you see a patient and they're not using cannabis, what types of medications are they? Because I'm not an expert on medications. What, what types of medications do you see patients on? Well, I'll give you an example. You know, yeah. there was myself, you know, I had been in a bad car accident back in 1999 and I had to get a double fusion in my neck as a result. And I had chronic pain thereafter. And for 18 years before I found cannabis, I was on a mixture of narcotics, you know, oxycodone, oxycontin, um, Flexeril, uh, Xanaflex. I mean, I can I can rattle off all kinds of drugs. You know, now, Zanax, was that something Xanax. they gave you right off the bat, or was this over time? Like, like well, over time when things didn't work, my doctor instead of taking me off of medication would stack another one on. And we find that so often in polypharmacy with the elderly. I specialize particularly with the elderly. Um, I like to work with older clients who are trying to work with issues, whether it's pain, uh, Parkinson's, cancer. Um, I went through breast cancer as well. So, you know, I know how all this is utilized for that. Uh, it's, it's, it's the most, if, if this was something brand new that we had never heard about, I can guarantee you that it would be known as like a breakthrough therapy in the medical field and everybody would be excited and everybody would be thrilled and they would be, you know, giving it to everybody. And I mean, it's nice to see state after state go into medical programs and then turn over to adult use. But, you know, everything has been kind of the cart before the horse with the cannabis industry. You know, the cannabis industry has been brought up without an infrastructure and, you know, we're trying to, uh, basically catch up as we go with legalization and everything, because it's still cannabis is still a federally illegal uh, substance. So when you say the cart before the horse, what exactly do you mean by that? In other words, we're rolling out programs without proper education of the public. When I first heard about Maryland coming up, I just learned about cannabis back, you know, 12 years ago. I learned at a patient's out of time conference that my husband took me to. And as a hospice nurse who had just you know, been through breast cancer treatment, I sat there with my mouth open. I'm like, you got to be kidding. What do you mean this is not allowed, you know, for cancer treatment? Because in my hospice experience as a nurse, I found that a lot of the drugs that were given just don't quite cut it with a cancer patient who's suffering through, you know, either chemotherapy or end stages. So, you know, this was fascinating to me. And I thought that this was the most wonderful thing since sliced bread, because when I was younger, I know that, you know, I, I see, I tried cannabis when I was younger, like most teenagers. And frankly, I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread to calm me down. I had, you know, teenage anxiety when I was 16 to 18. And I, this particular substance could calm me down. So I knew there was something to it. And the fact that it was a plant that grows in the ground that has been here for, you know, millions of years for all we know. You know, it's, there's got to be something good about this. And what I found out and what I've witnessed has been nothing, nothing short of remarkable and outstanding yeah. as far as what this can do for people. Yeah. And, and, you know, I really respect you for taking care of the elderly. And they say something about how a, a society is measured at how well we take care of our elderly. And, and it really, there aren't enough people that do take care of, um, take care of the elderly. So thank you for that. Um, and and this, um, the, I wanted to take a step back to the medications that you were taking, you know, not cannabis, that doctors prescribe for, you know, trying to cope with the pain. What are some of the the downsides to them? Um, switching from one to the other. What are some of the side effects that people could experience using um, some of the drugs that you talked about? Oh heavens! Oh my goodness! Well, you know, they talk about you know the big thing they're talking about is impairment, right? when you're impaired on the job or what have you, I was a nurse, I was a community nurse, I was a nurse in facilities. And when I'm taking all these medications for pain and muscle relaxing and anxiety and sleep, sometimes I would come to work with a hangover from, um, from out of it, not out of van, um, Ambien oh, yeah. or, or, um, you know, functioning during the day, if I would get stressed, I'd take, you know, one of my stress meds and then I'd be kind of sleepy and a little bit out of it. And, it's, it's hard to function, even when you're taking pharmaceuticals. 
And I think it's kind of crazy that, you know, they're trying to separate cannabis out as a drug, like a pharmaceutical, as far as side effects, you know, when they don't consider side effects of like alcohol and other things that people are doing. And the side effects, you know, can, can be catastrophic. You know, if you're taking, you know, medications that, that blunt your response time, like driving or whatever. And all narcotics do that. All anti-anxiety meds do that. And a lot of uh, the meds that they're using for other disorders can blunt your reaction time with driving. So, you know, I think it's a matter of, you know, being responsible and paying attention to your own body is very important when you're utilizing cannabis. I try to tell my patients, please be patient with yourself. Pay attention to your body, journal, write down everything you can think of because journaling is the quickest and easiest way to determine what your exact sweet spot is, where your, your balance of your CBD, THC, and other cannabinoids. Well, let's talk about that. Um, when, when you're talking about, you know, doctors prescribe medications, um, it, it works or it doesn't work, or you have a side effect, you don't. And let's not, we don't need to get into intoxicating and, and that part but what I really want to talk about is what you just mentioned, which is how to get started. So if you are in a situation where you're in pain um, and, and you're on maybe you're on medications, maybe you're, you're ready to go to the doctor um, and you want to look at cannabis as a solution. Now, it's our wish that you try it before you try anything else. But we get it. You know, not all the doctors are educated enough to feel comfortable or even allowed to make a recommendation. So, you know, the giving patients information to empower them to make their decision on their own and for themselves to help them get through this pain and cope. How would someone get started? Now, of course, they'd want to talk with someone, but what kind of tips would you give them as far as a, a, you know, a guideline to, to begin the process? Okay. Well, with most people, we need to look at their medications that they're on already because there aren't a lot, but there are some medications that can interact with cannabis in a negative way. There is nothing that will kill you. However, there are a lot of medications, narcotics, benzodiazepines, muscle relaxers, that when you take a cannabis uh, formulation with it, it will kind of kick up the effects and make the effects stronger. So the way that this works is a lot of times I'll have patients that are on narcotics or pain medication or whatever. I'll say, here's what you need to do. Take your cannabis before you even get out of bed at the morning, in the morning. And I usually recommend a little bit more than what, you know, they recommend to start low and go slow, of course, with like five milligrams. When it comes to CBD and hemp derived products, in my opinion, CBD works a little bit better and it's a little bit more noticeable if you start with a classic uh, dosage of about 20 milligrams, 20 milligrams two times a day, okay, in the morning and at night. You can do that while you're also taking all of your other meds, unless you're taking blood thinners such as warfarin or Coumadin or Theophylline or statins for uh, cholesterol. We usually wait about two hours in between cannabis and that. And this is because usually... If you're taking an oral formulation, such as a tincture, such as a gummy, all oral medication, including pills, tinctures, etc., are all metabolized through the liver. And they metabolize with these enzymes that they compete with one another. So we want to take out the competition. So that's why I say to space it and, and take your cannabis before you even take the rest of your medication. Another thing, too, when you're dealing with THC, THC, I always tell patients, especially my elderly, to start with the minimal amount you can get in a dosage. And I've told people to even cut up gummies um, into a logical, you know, if it's a 10 milligram gummy, cut it in quarters um, and try 2.5 at a time. I think Avexia or a couple other of the brands in Maryland produce a one milligram THC tablet. And you have to give yourself another hour and a half for that to take effect. So it takes some time, it takes some patience, it takes some documentation in order to realize how these, how these formulations are working for you. So how does someone know whether to start with CBD or THC? I would say universally CBD 
doesn't hurt anybody. I mean, we all, because cannabis has been prohibited to our population for over 80 years, um, and it's a naturally occurring uh, chemical reaction in the body with our own endogenous endocannabinoid system, you know, we have our own body system that actually needs this. So most people in general population are already deficient in their cannabinoid tone. So I would say, you know, I always push full spectrum because the plant comes as the plant and anything that we have extracted has got to be helpful because the plant itself for years and years and years, thousands of years has been helpful without hurting anyone. Got it. So starting with CBD mm -hmm. and then uh, let's say what would be a good time to, cause you want to journal. So you're getting started. So I'm just putting myself in a situation. So I'm going to start with CBD um, twice a day. And um, now we're talking good. about for a pain situation, right? So if I'm in a pain, a chronic pain, I'm going to try it twice a day. How long should I um, stay at that serving? Um, am I, am I going to get something instantly? Do I want some time to go by? It, it all depends on what formulation you have and how well it kicks with your body because everyone is individual with their endocannabinoid system. Much like your blood type or your fingerprint, everyone has them, but everyone has individual specific specificities <laughs> um, to their systems. And, you know, I usually just start generically with, you know, a full spectrum CBD hemp product. Um, to 20 milligrams or work up to 20 milligrams twice a day in the morning and at night, 12 hours apart um, for about seven days to 10 days. Okay. If you feel nothing, any difference at all, you can try increasing it by five more milligrams each dosage of the CBD formulation, or you can start layering a little bit more THC in there. Usually when we layer just a little bit of THC at a time, you'll find within probably a week to two weeks, your sweet spot, the, the place where the CBD and the THC come together like magic and you'll know it. It's not, it's the way I explain it to people is cannabis is not something that knocks you in the head when it works. You know, when you take a narcotic or whatever, or you, you drink alcohol, you know, within an hour, you know, you have your effects and everything else. When you're taking straight THC, you'll have the same effects. But with CBD, it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're going about your normal day and you notice, hmm, I didn't have to take my PRN meds this afternoon. And I feel like I can still do some stuff. And you write that down in your journal, check the timing, see how long it's lasting. Because, you know, with some people, uh, you know, the tincture may last four hours. For me in particular, it lasts almost 10. So, and I've been, I've been regulated on all of this for about, eight years now. Well, Take I can see how day. the journaling is important because uh, just as you mentioned that, like I'll be focusing on something for work for something, working on a project and I'll realize like I haven't eaten lunch and hours have gone by. So my perception of what's happening is shifted a little bit. So if you're, if you're not then noting it down as time goes by, you forget. So keeping a journal, I can, I can really see as you're, as you're finding your sweet spot, until you really know what it feels like. Cause you, and in the beginning, I, I would imagine there's a lot of anxiety. Like you take it and you're like, all right, well, what's happening? Like, what is going to happen to me? What am I going to do? Um, what's this going to do to me? Uh, so, you know, thanks for, for giving that, uh, you know, understanding of what to expect and, and laid out. So then you're titrating in some THC and the goal here, not, not is not to say, Oh, I'm at, at a high that I like, right? Like, yeah. oh, the good yeah, buzz. I mean, but however, I have found that a lot of patients, you know, they'll try CBD and they'll be like, it's not working. Nothing's working. I'm like, give it some time because sometimes it takes some time for your body to assimilate, you know, the medicine. However, you know, once, once you incorporate and layer in that THC, there's a certain sweet spot you get to where it is psychoactive, but it's just a little bit psychoactive. And as far as a milligram dosage, I would say most people react to cannabis psychoactively with, with five milligrams. You normally don't need to go above five milligrams unless you're taking it over time for a long time 
where you gain tolerance and you need to up the dose a little bit. But I wouldn't go to when five. You, say psychoactive, you mean like intoxicating? Because a lot of people say like even coffee can be psychoactive and CBD because it does. Sure. I just mean you'll feel it in your head in some way, shape or form, whether right. you feel more relaxed or whether you feel like, you know, you want to take Happy. on the world, <laughs> or, or goofy, uh, you know, and each strain or each varietal of cannabis tends to have like semi or different results, you know, Nowadays, we have so many hybrids because they're breeding and breeding and breeding and increasing that THC. And another thing I want to remind people about is this is not the cannabis that you smoked back in 1970. The cannabis we have nowadays is much more powerful. Um, I'm actually trying to find um, cannabis varietals that are under 25% THC. It's because a lot of my patients are asking for a, a lower type of thing. So yeah. I ask, you know, I'm telling them, well, if you can get a hold of some hemp flour, you know, mix that a little bit, like a quarter to three quarters with your THC flour, and you can down that, you know, THC level. Yeah. So as a medical director, um, and you're, you're very familiar with what the products they have in dispensaries and, um, you know, when you when you pay a license and this is, you know, I guess kind of the cart before the horse, because as a uh, the con consumers aren't educated. So they think that the highest value is that I need the highest THC. Right. Um, that I can get. And if it's not the highest THC, then, eh, you know, it's a less it's a lesser quality. But that's not the case, is it? Well, the problem is that, you know, it's, it's expensive. I mean, if you're on a limited income and I mean, with COVID and everything else, everybody's tight on money. And to me, you know, I, because we don't have many products that are one milligram or 2.5 milligrams or whatever, I'll tell patients, you know, go ahead and get yourself a 10 milligram gummy, just cut it into quarters, you know, and try one piece at a time as you're titrating yourself up. That way they have enough time with that product to figure it out. It could be that that product might hype them up a little bit too much, depending on whatever they added to it. So they may need to go with something else that's, you know, uh, marketed as indica or marketed with the terpenes that are meant more for sleep or relaxing, like myrcene or linalool. Got it. Yeah. And, and the terpenes can add a whole nother level without getting too into terpenes, because it is another compound in the plant that we can get very elaborate with. And I think as, as a beginner, is there a a basic understanding of terpenes that um, we, you can give that just help people understand what that, what terpenes are? Well, terpenes are what you have when you smell a fruit or you smell a flower. Anything that you smell is a terpene. Each terpene is different. And we know, you know, we're, we're learning about cannabinoids by what people are producing and most everything that we find now is either isolate THC, THC with added terpenes. Very rarely do we find full spectrum products in the marketplace. We find full spectrum products usually within the hemp world um, because, you know, that's where the value add is. Um, I think that utilizing, you know, those products in a careful, concise controlled, systematic way in titration, people can figure it out. They really can. It's not that difficult. Gotcha. Yeah, so, so, you know, terpenes are something that smells and it has therapeutic. Other people oh, mentioned. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I didn't answer your question. The terpenes, what I'd usually tell people is with the things that you smell, if you smell a lemon, that kind of perks you up a little bit. Okay. If you smell lavender, Lavender is more of a relaxing smell. You can smell almost any essential oil and find out yourself which, which terpenes work well for you. If you go into the grocery store and they have a lineup of terpene bottles of essential oils, go around and smell the terpenes in the essential oils and figure out what are the ones that you really like. The main terpenes we look at right now in cannabis are myrcene, which is uh, in the form, mangoes have myrcene, um, other fruits have myrcene. Myrcene ha has more of a uh, relaxing body effect, whereas uh, 
beta-caryophylline, which is what we find in black pepper, has more of a stop <laughs> effect. And we find that, you know, beta-caryophylline, if it's a decent amount in your cannabis flower, say, it's going to taper down that THC reaction because that's kind of what beta-caryophylline does. If you have myrcene in your cannabis, then it's going to be more of a body relaxing thing. Same with linalool. If you take limonene or pinene, pinene and limonene are known to elevate your mood or help you stay awake, things of that sort. So it's not so much the indica and sativa anymore as what everybody's heard their whole life about cannabis. It's more about the terpenes and how those cannabinoids mix with those terpenes. Yeah. So that's something else that you'd want to keep track of is um, the CBD, how much THC you're titrating in. And then what, what, terpenes, if any, are around the products that are in the products that you're taking, because it may give a clue to what your, you know, what your magic dose is. And one of the things I learned, uh, Don Marie, as we've been growing hemp for the past few years is sun grown. Most of the dispensaries are grown indoors mm -hmm. and, um, with artificial lights. Um, beta myrcene is um, very dominant in sun grown cannabis. So our, all of our tinctures are very high in beta myrcene, primarily because we do all sun, sun grown cannabis. We believe in, you know, sun, soil grown, regenerative farming and all that stuff to sure. you know, take us back to simpler times, I guess, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's really helpful. So one of the other things as a, um, uh, you know, going to dispensers, you haven't said anything about taking bong hits or taking big dab rigs and smoking at all. Um, do you have to smoke cannabis or is that, where does that come into play? Cause you mentioned gummies and, you know, ingesting it as medicine. Right. Um, how does the smoking fit in smoking joints and, you know, well, of course we know that, you know, traditionally people smoke cannabis. That's the high, that's the most common way people consume cannabis is smoking it, but it's not like cigarettes. Okay. Um, a lot of people think, well, you're trading cigarettes for smoking cannabis, and that's not the way it is at all. Because when you smoke cannabis, you're normally only smoking a few puffs at a time, and then you're putting it down and putting it out and saving it for later, unless you're sharing with somebody, which, you know, with infection control and everything else, <laughs> I'm still a little bit funny about that. But, yeah. you know, it seems to me that if, 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 if we're, if we're taking cannabis and we're smoking it, we find that inhalation has the quickest effect, okay? If you inhale cannabis within a minute or two, you're gonna know how you feel in your head, okay? So smoking, vaping, which I, I don't even recommend vaping unless you use a cannabis flower vaporizer, okay? Uh, vaping with the pens, you know, they're, they're still out a little bit on, you know, pen manufacturing. We do know that the pens in Maryland are safe, but we're not sure about, you know, pens anywhere else. Um, everything we have in Maryland, thank God, is lab tested, mother approved, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we actually know what's in our medicine and we know what's not in our medicine, such as, you know, mold, um, residual uh, extraction things. You know, mm -hmm. we have pretty pure, clean medicine here. So... You know, when we inhale, we get that instantaneous relief. However, when you inhale, you only get about maybe three hours worth of relief from whatever you're inhaling for, or three hours to relax and hang out with your friends or whatever. When you take something by mouth, then it takes about an hour and a half to actually kick in. But a lot of times you can get four, six, eight, ten hours worth of relief if you're looking for pain seizure relief, whatever, utilizing cannabis as a, as a, um, edible or an ingestible. We so also the, have, so the route of administration does, does matter in how you're. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, again, it's not the 1970s cannabis. We have pills, we have brownies, we have gummies, we have suppositories, we have, uh, all kinds of ways to administer cannabis. And every one of them has some sort of health benefit, which is the amazing part to me. You know, tinctures and drinks. Um, I believe there are some companies that are trying to mix cannabis with alcohol. I don't advise that. Not on, uh, not for a million years do I advise that. But I'm sure that it's going to be a thing. 
Well, you know, there's that. Um, and we were talking about this before we went live today is, um, you know, I've, I've used cannabis my whole life and I started smoking and, um, you know, I'd, I'd like the the blend between smoking it and drinking it. But for me, it was used as, um, you know, to get intoxicated. But you made a comment, which was, you know, all cannabis use is somewhat medicinal. Mm -hmm. right? I believe and that. I do. I was using it to get high. There's a reason for that. There's a reason you want to get high. I mean, I did a report for college a long time ago that talks about the fact that since we're children, all the way back to being an infant, have you ever seen little kids spin yeah. constantly until they, they throw up or they get dizzy or whatever, or they'll spin a swing? Uh -huh. We all have this drive to get out of ourselves once in a while and feel differently. And that drive follows through your entire life. So there are going to be times that people take cannabis just to relax, just to take it easy, just to take the edge off the day, to relax with friends. You're taking it because you want to bring down whatever stress you're under. So it's technically being used for stress relief in my mind. Um, same with sleeping. You know, a person may take cannabis to sleep at night. Um, but I think that most use has a medical component in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. And I know, at least personally, uh, I used to, um, you know, smoke before I would run or smoke before I would do yoga. And over time, as you progress, um, I don't know if it's just getting older, but it became, for me, almost a distraction because it's it's not artificially separating yourself but it is it's not you know you know the goal for me is to be able to heal myself from within right and, and it's and of course food and food is medicine and it's not like i'm gonna never eat again but what foods you eat what you put into your body is is an accumulated and accumulates and you know it makes you who you are so i think um you know th those people that we see smoking um it don't, you know, don't be so quick to judge thinking that someone is just there, you know, a junkie or a druggie and, and getting high. Like they, th this is, um, you know, even if people are doing things that it may seem, um, you know, we don't know what everyone's dealing with. So I, I like this topic of, uh, of cannabis as um, both religious, uh, medical, as well as recreational, because it can fill a lot of different buckets. And, um, and, and the other thing that, 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 I think you may have said before is, you know, people don't ask, like, how does their aspirin work? Right. And, and, and what's going on with their aspirin? And how does it, uh, what is it doing to me? And, and it, bring up cannabis, a plant, and all of a sudden everyone's, you know, what's going on here with this, uh, this stuff? Well, nobody knows that, you know, your aspirin can kill you. You know, water can kill you. Caffeine can kill you. Every other drug substance out there you know, like I said, even water has a toxicity where if you drink too much water, you can literally kill yourself. If you don't drink enough water, you'll get dehydrated and then you could possibly die from that. So the, the whole purpose of this is to get people more in tune with their own bodies, to listen to ourselves, to take that time and that patience to get to know how your own body reacts to this substance taken in little bits and pieces, you know, try the CBD first, try full spectrum. And, you know, even if you don't get any results from that, keep taking that and then layer in a little bit of THC at a time. And I guarantee you, if you really do this carefully and you really pay attention to yourself, you'll have an answer within like a month as far as what you need and how you need it. What I find a lot is people get frustrated and they're like, oh, this doesn't work. That doesn't work. And they throw them away. I'm like, don't throw away your medicine. I mean, you because there, it's possible that, number one, you weren't taking a high enough dose. Number two, you need a little bit more THC to kick it up a notch because everything is made usually manufactured as isolate combinations. So the only way we get the full benefit of the plant the entire cannabis plant is to utilize a full spectrum product. Makes sense. Well, thanks, Don Marie. I appreciate the conversation. Uh, that's a telemarketer calling. I guess it's time for us to go today. Um, but hopefully you'll join us again. 
um, and we can do this conversation and there's more to talk about, I'm sure. Um, one of the things I wanted to end with is because you really do compassionate care and I can tell that um, I know a few people that um, really could use the sound advice that you have in helping them struggle with with uh, pain and getting their <laughs> their meds correct. And, and also you are you do have a cold today. So thanks for joining us. I know um, it, it has been tough, but you, you really held yourself together for this. Yeah. Um, how do people get in touch with you, Dawn Marie? And um, what's the best uh, the best way to do that? Well, you can get in touch with me by contacting uh, going to entourageconsulting.net on the internet, go to the contact us tab and send me a note, or you can contact me at Dawn Marie at entourage consulting.net. Okay. And I'll However, put those if, you're, if you're going into a dispensary and we have adult use happening as of July 1st, and everything is still very much up in the air as far as how it's going to roll out, make sure you ask if you have a medical condition or you're on a lot of medications Make sure you ask for a clinical director in the store. Every store in Maryland must have a clinical director available, not necessarily in the store, like myself, as far as getting a, a hold of one, you know, on the internet or by email. Right. So that's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up. So if someone is going into a dispensary, because of July 1st, you don't have to have a medical card. You don't have to go through the, the process of involving your doctor. You can just walk in um, with your ID 21 and over, and you can purchase cannabis. Right. Um, if you if you want to get THC um, for CBD, actually, Walman's Apothecary, we sell online and we can deliver right to your house, full spectrum, just like Don was talking about. You don't need a card for. Um, and if you if you do need, um, obviously, if you're working with us, you'd want to um, reach out and and we can put you in touch with Don. Um, but if you go into the dispensary and you and you're purchasing uh, the cannabis products in a dispensary, ask them for a conversation with a medical director, they all have to have them. And even if they're not in the store, they can get you on the phone and connect you with the call. So you, you can make a, a wise decision about your purchase because, you know, right now as they're ramping up and you can imagine it's like people waiting in line to get in and then finally they're in and the people that they've trained to work in this, they aren't like Dawn Marie. They don't have experience caring for people. Now they've gone through the training program and they can help you make a decision, but they don't, they're not able to incorporate your specific situation into that solution, the decision that you need to make. So if you, if you're thinking about going there July 1st, you know, and then if we're, if you're in Maryland or if you're in any other state, if you're thinking about going, just do a little bit of homework before you go in there. And, and know what you want. It makes it easier for everyone. Well, and another thing too is remember, it's not the highest THC that's the ticket to feeling better. It's better to titrate from 2.5 and work your way up because I guarantee you, if you take too much THC, it will not be pleasant. I mean, it's not pleasant. I don't know whether you've ever had a really bad drunk or whatever, but it is, it is not pleasant. So it could turn you against cannabis if you take too much. So the, the ticket here is to start low, go slow, and give your body some time and a chance. If you're smoking, then just take one or two puffs at a time and wait a few minutes, three to five minutes, and see how you feel. If you feel like you could use some more, take one more puff and wait. You know, a lot of people just get into the party mode and the next thing you know, they're drinking a drink and they're taking a gummy and they're smoking something and they're going to fall out sick, you know, in about two hours. So my goal is to keep everybody safe out there. You know, we're, we're ramping up for legalization in Maryland. It's going to be amazing, but everybody still needs to stay safe. Thank you. And on those words, we'll finish this call today. Thanks so much, Don Marie. Appreciate the conversation and um, we'll hopefully have you back on soon. Anytime.